All right, so it's been a couple days, guys, and uh, luckily, at least in the past couple days, the temp has gone from about 90 to 55, so at least it's not hot in here. Um, but I did find a 1 and 7 16th inch crow's foot that I was going to try and use on my barrel nut. However, when I was going to use it, uh, I realized that it was actually too thick here and I needed something that was only about a half inch or less thick. So I ended up doing a bunch more research and I tried to find one. I couldn't find it anywhere online. So I called the company, I asked them if they had one because in their catalog, they actually showed one that they used for it. Um, they said they didn't sell anything separately. Kept searching, I went back and I called them again. I said, you know, how do y'all not have one? This is for your barrel nut. I can't even find anything anywhere. Basically, they said they'd stopped manufacturing it and that they don't sell it. They were looking around their place for an extra one that they could give me, but never heard back from them. Um, so unfortunately, if you do buy this F1 handguard, uh, you may want to be careful on that and make sure you have the correct uh, wrench to do this. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to torque it down. So they did say it was good for about 30 to 80 foot-pounds of torque and just recommended using a, a basic crescent wrench here. Um, it's not really the way I would want to do this, honestly, but I don't think I have another option. Um, and from my research, 80 pounds of torque is quite a bit of strength to put into it so um, and that's kind of what these guys at F1 said was honestly you're really probably not going to under torque it and it's pretty hard to over torque it so you know just put some moderate pressure into it and get it torqued down so I guess that's what I'm going to do if I can eventually find a crow's foot or something that works for this and I can actually torque it down I'll do that but at this point, I'll just use my crescent wrench. I will say for those that can torque it down, I just will give you a tip. Um, when you put it on your torque wrench and you go to torque it down, you need to be 90 degrees. So you don't want to be here. You don't want to be like this with the torque wrench. You actually want to start at 90 degrees. So just a tip, um, if you are going to torque it down, make sure you're at 90 degrees from the torque wrench. All right, so we'll go back to the barrel nut. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this uh, arrow shell just to make sure I don't get it seized up on me. Tighten this back down. So now that I got it hand tight, I'm gonna come in here and just put some, some pressure on it. We'll get it there. And so what you do with a new barrel nut is you actually want to kind of torque it down and then loosen it up, and then I'm gonna torque it back down some, and then loosen it up one more time. And this just helps uh, get the threads in there and, and, and loosen them up a little bit so that it, it kind of helps prevent seizing as well. Um, so let's go ahead and torque it down. All right, I think that's probably pretty good. I'm honestly gonna keep an eye on it as I shoot it because I didn't get to torque it. So I wanna make sure we're good. One thing you do need to check is you need to make sure that your handguard lines up with it and that your holes line up. Otherwise you may need to torque it a little bit more or less. So you can see my holes here aren't lining up. So I'm gonna have to either add the shim in there or torque it some more. It seemed pretty far off, so I think I'm gonna have to go add this shim. Came with a couple shims. I am going to loosen it back up. All right, so one shim was not quite enough, I don't think. I'm gonna add this other shim in there and I think we should be good. A little bit more. That looks to line up right there. So I had to add both shims to be able to get your holes to line up well. The next thing I'm going to install is this gas block. This is a Wagitech 
arms gas block. It's a clamp on style, not the pin. So you just clamp it around. They actually pre-installed my rifle length gas tube here. The gas tubes you can install with a pin right here. And uh, it's actually pretty difficult unless you have a jig. I mean, it's not difficult. It's just kind of a pain in the ass more than anything. But this was like an extra dollar to have them install the uh, gas block on this one. This is an adjustable gas block. So you can actually, with an Allen key, come in here and adjust it. I've put this on some other guns and had no issues with it before. So when you're installing this, you know, there's a couple different things you got to be aware of. There's a hole. There's a hole in there, right? Right there at the back end. And so that's where you need your uh, gas to be able to come out of the barrel and into the tube there. What I uh, have noticed on some barrels, you know, you can go all the way. Let's see if I can get you this in view here. So there's a mark right here where your gas block will stop, and I'll kind of show you that. All right, so see how it kind of stopped right there? It hits that. Um, so some of these barrels and gas blocks are designed to go all the way against that stop, but when you're using two different manufacturers, you want to check into that. So what I tend to do is I, you can, I know this hole that I was pointing out earlier is lined up in the center of one of these guys. Um, so what I like to do is I will, and it's on the wrong side for y'all, but I see where that hole here and I can, I don't know if you can see that hole very well, but there's a hole right there and I see where it lines up in that as well. And it's actually, the gas hole is centered here. So you can tell that against this wall, that that hole on the barrel is centered in this oval and so is the hole for the gas block. So I know I can push this all the way against the barrel and not have an issue. I know that's not super scientific uh, and probably not what a beginner is necessarily looking for here, but usually these gas ports are oversized and so you don't have much of an issue with it getting it to line up. So you're gonna go ahead and stick the gas tube into your uh, receiver. And then we'll just push that over. So I'm pushing all the way against the wall. And I don't really need to be in the vise right now for this, so I can take that out. Um, but you also want to make sure this is lined up perfectly straight this way. So if you look down your receiver, you can line it up. So we'll look down it. That looks pretty good. Some of these uh, gas blocks will have an indention on the edge and an indention on the barrel if you get the same barrel and block uh, to help you line it up. Or what I've done is I put a Sharpie mark on my gas block and a Sharpie mark on the barrel and I can line it up myself. That looks pretty good there. You can go ahead and tighten your clamp on block down here. I personally like the clamp on blocks. You don't have to put a mark in your barrel to do your set screw. Some barrels come with it already, so if it does, you could do your set screw gas block, but I like the clamp on. It's one less thing I have to, to deal with. So that's kind of why I go with the clamp on version. And I go with an adjustable gas block as well because I plan on running this suppressed. And a lot of times you'll have to adjust that to be able to cycle correctly. Got that on there good. You may want to test that your uh, handguard does fit over it. So that's one thing as you're going through this uh, process, you wanna make sure that you're buying parts and pieces that uh, will fit together. And so some of these gas blocks are low profile, some are high profile, so you just need to keep an eye on what you're purchasing and making sure that that gas block will fit under your handguard there. So the next item I have is the muzzle device. This is the Silencer Co. ASR muzzle brake. This muzzle device gives me the ability to attach my uh, silencer to it quickly. 
And so I actually have put one of these on pretty much every build I've had. So like I said, this is the Silent Circo ASR muzzle device. You can see it has some threads here that my uh, Omega 300 will screw into. So that will allow me to uh, quick detach my silencer between guns. It comes with some rock set here. So this muzzle device was, I think is typically right around a hundred bucks. They had a sale going on a couple of weeks ago actually. And I got it for 70, what was it? 74, I think 74, 75. So was pretty happy getting it at that price. Thought I was gonna have to pay a hundred for it. So can't complain about that. For installing this muzzle device, I am going to just thread it on there right now and kind of see where it lines up to see if I need any of those uh, spacers on there. So like I said, this is 20 to 30 uh, foot pounds of torque. So I will grab my torque wrench on this again. So I think I'm gonna want a spacer or two because you want your holes here facing uh, outside more like there. So I will add a shim in here. And so I, I like to get it lined up and know what I need before I, uh, um, that's a thicker one it looks like. So we'll try that first. Um, before I put the, the rock set or Loctite on there, um, because you know that stuff can dry pretty quickly sometimes and I just don't want to mess with it. I figured this is a little bit better process here. And you actually don't want to use a uh, crush washer on these. Um, Silencer Co. says that the crush washer doesn't flatten perfectly and you could end up with some baffle strikes. So just want to give you all that note as well. So we'll see if this one works. That was a little much. Yep, that'll do it. So when I torque it down, it should uh, be good to go there. For this, they do provide you some rock set here. Um, there's kind of different ways I've seen people use this. I'm not planning on using the gun or putting the suppressor on anytime soon necessarily. So I'm not gonna heat it up or anything. I'm just gonna put a couple drops on here. And then uh, we'll let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours before I mess with it too much. On this, we actually will get to use our torque wrench. And I am going to set it to start with 20 foot pounds and see where that puts us at. You have an armor's wrench that works here. I'll fit right there. Like I mentioned, you want to go at a 90 degree angle from that. And since you're so far away from your receiver, you may want to kind of hold here to give it a little support. And you'll hear it click like that. And I'm not quite where I want to line up, so I'm actually going to bump this to probably 25 foot-pounds and see if I can get it to get there. Mm, it is close. Let's see. I may just go ahead and go to 30 because it's not quite where I want it. So let's put it on 30. All right. So that looks pretty good there. So like I said, you'll want to let this sit for about 24 to 48 hours before you uh, try and put your suppressor on it so that that rock set will uh, harden up there. Now uh, I can go ahead and put my handguard over here. For the handguard, it did come with some blue Loctite and a bunch of screws here. I am not going to Loctite these in right now, I don't think, um, since just kind of want to see how it looks, but I will eventually lock tight them in. So trying to get us in the picture here, but this is the upper receiver. 
We went ahead and we installed the barrel, barrel nut. We got the gas block installed. We put the handguard over the top. And I went ahead and installed the muzzle device. And it looks like everything lines up pretty much perfect. So I'm not sure how long this video is. If it's getting a little too long, I'll do the rest of it and the finish in the next video. But we are pretty close to being done with this. All we have left is your BCG that we're gonna install and the charging handle and then putting it all together. So that being said, we're gonna head back inside and finish up this rifle and then I will go through and show you all the pricing of everything and how much it cost me to do this and talk a little bit more about this gun. Thanks guys.